Okay, so the cell as a protein factory um, is referring to the fact that this cell and all of its organelles, their primary function is to crank out a certain product, and those products are going to be re uh, related to transcribed and translated amino acid sequences or proteins that have function in either the cell or various areas of the body. Uh, the, the code that controls this protein synthesis is found here in the nucleus. You see the nucleoplasm here, and the chromatin, the coiled um, uh, DNA or chromosomes tightly packed around histone proteins and packed into this nucleus. At the center you see the uh, nucleolus which produces ribosomal RNA and is uh, responsible for the ribosomes we see studying the surface of the rough ER for example out here uh, surrounding the nuclear envelope. So um, encompassing everything in the nucleus, the, this control center so to speak, we'd have the nuclear envelope and small holes uh, through that membrane, uh, the nuclear pores. So as we begin to function, this, spe this specific cell is going to require energy for what we talk about, and that'll be provided by mitochondria and, the, and glycolysis occurring in the cytoplasm, uh, extended by the mitochondrial matrix and its Krebs cycle and electron transport for metabolism within the cell. That's what we'll talk about later. Um, as we want prote protein synthesis to begin, we, we use the DNA coil or uncoil the DNA and use the DNA code on these chromosomes uh, and open up a bubble so that we can transcribe the code into a different sequence and substitute uracil for thymine. That is referred to, once we've done that, we create these codon sequences, triplets, that are on the, uh, in the form of messenger RNA. The messenger RNA, once it's complete and with its start and stop codons, um, at, at either side so that we know when to start and stop the assembly of these, this protein chain or amino acid chain leaves the nucleus through a nuclear pore, hooks up with a ribosome either freely floating or most likely on the surface of this rough ER and then begins the assembly of a polypeptide chain of amino acids, the complexity of which can vary based on uh, what type of protein you're looking at, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. Um, dictated by the, the nucleus and its DNA. Uh, so we have messenger RNA now outside of the nucleus hooked up with a ribosome and we've begun the translation portion that's following transcription that we just described in the nucleus of the cell. As translation uh, continues we'll see that the product that we're making is going to be put into uh, the Golgi where it'll be packaged and modified and hooked up with a motor protein and it'll be inched along uh, microtubules out to the surface of the cell where that vesicle will fuse since its membrane is the same phospholipid makeup as the cell membrane uh, it will fuse with that membrane and exocytosis of our product will occur. Um, if something foreign invades the cell during this time and attacks and the cell needs to maintain its function then we would use lysosomes and phagocytize that debris and, and that foreign microbe to keep the cell functioning. All of these organelles we're seeing here are going to be involved in that basic factory type mentality and as the cell is about to die off it's going to want to keep the factory going so it reproduces its DNA or it, it replicates its DNA in the nucleus then it's going to uh, have a full complement, a diploid mount that's double in the nucleus so that when the cell divides and uses these centrioles for uh, division during the mitosis it will actually go to either pole, it'll show up and it'll pull that cell through cytokinesis into two daughter cells and begin the process again and protein production is essential to getting the cell to the right size so it can function normally in a tissue, organ, and organ system. Is that cool?